Mike Wisniewski today and uh, got a chance to meet him a few years ago when I went down to Florida and we have a, uh, a lot of things in common, one of which is uh, we both like to fish and uh, we both like taco stands. <laughs> I forgot about that one. <laughs> but uh, but uh, Brother Mike, why don't you take a moment and uh, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your, your family, and uh, and then we'll we'll kind of go from there. Well, D, good afternoon, buddy. And uh, like I said, you it's been a pleasure, D, that out of nowhere, a couple of years ago, you and I met kind of as complete strangers there. And it didn't take but a couple of minutes of going down the road, D, that I felt like this was going to turn into something, to be honest with you, and, and at least in my heart and my opinion, D, that turned out to be something pretty special there. Uh, I D, I'm 54 years old, born and raised right here in Melbourne, Florida. There was in the Air Force for a few years. Uh, got a loving wife that's uh, in the medical profession. There is a as a nurse practitioner and a 23 year old son right now that is uh, on his way to the airlines to be a commercial airline pilot there, D. And uh, wow, a member of Graceway Church here in Melbourne, Florida, and I've had a whirlwind of a life d and you know when you and i had talked about that or had the opportunity through the course of a couple of days out there on the water there in the boat fishing together that uh wow there's a lot of stories there uh i guess a, a man with many hats d if in all honesty if that would be a title that i could ever put on myself maybe would be a man that's worn many hats there through the course of 54 years d so uh been very blessed though been very very blessed and you and your wife, um, how, how long have you guys been married? <laughs> You're going to get me in trouble now, aren't you? <laughs> so, uh, D, this this coming up uh, June, just coming up June is 27 years. 27 years. 27 years. Uh, met her down, down in Okeechobee. She's from down south there in Clewiston, Florida, there on the south end of Okeechobee. And uh, some friends introduced us to her or introduced me to Serena and I was fishing, just finishing up a tournament and hot, dirty, aggravated, didn't fish well, uh, met at a pizza hut, to be honest with you. And, uh, I guess after that, there rest is history there. She'd been with me 27 years and I keep saying, I said, I'm the one that got the better part of that deal there. So, uh, got a loving wife. Uh, uh I've got a godly woman there, D and that's been, she's definitely been the, the, the backbone of our of our family, of our relationship. Uh, and uh, she's a steady hand for me there, D, without a shadow of a doubt. So let's walk through a little bit of your your salvation testimony, how you came to know the Lord and, and uh, what God's been doing in your life uh, since then. Wow. D, where, we, where do we go? I, I some days wonder, D, if God has not given me, I use that word as a man with many hats, but God has allowed me to see a many, many a thing in my life, D. And I really don't, I don't say this in a prideful manner, D, but I don't have really one testimony, I guess, because there's been so many highs and so many lows through the course of my life, D, that I can reflect upon and use those as value of experiences to be very pulled apart from God, but then to sit there and be very, very close to God to where we're at now in 2021, D, uh, D as, as you know, the big story here, D, and I don't think it's a, it's nothing new to you. You and I had spoke about there, there, uh, just a little over 19 years ago, Serena and I lost our, our youngest son, Cole. Uh, he was two and a half, was diagnosed with a a very rare, rare genetic disease. D, we were members of a church. I've been there for 30 some years. Through the course of two and a half years of cold being sick, D, I pulled away from God. I still believed in God. I still loved God. But it's one of those situations, D, as you're fighting a situation each and every day that you know the outcome is inevitable. Down on your knees every day. Many people praying for you. Many people loved on, on, on you. And D, I got to a point there 
shy of 20 years ago, D, that things weren't working. I weren't getting the answers for my prayers that I was praying for. Still believed in God, D, but I started to backslide pretty bad. I, I, I pulled away from God because, to be honest with you, D, I was mad at God. I was mad. Uh, I, as I spoke to you there when we first met, D, that I, I would never consider myself then through the course of 20 years or the next 20 years. I would never put myself up as father of the year by any means or Serena as mother of the year. But by goodness, we love our kids. We love Cole and Lane, something awful there. and. Uh, uh, D, just my relationship with God became very, very shallow. The night Cole passed away, I sat out on out there on the driveway on a bucket looking at a star or a, a, a sky full of stars. And I knew, D, without a shadow of my heart or a shadow of a doubt, D, that I knew that where Cole was. I, 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 I knew it, D. Uh, so I was... I was feeling very fortunate and blessed that 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 Cole would never hurt again. Cole would never have any pain again. That Cole, for, from from that point on, Cole was going to be a perfect child. But I was still hurting, D. I still hurt today. Uh, that pain won't ever go away. But I was still mad at God. And it took me quite a few years, D. It took me quite a few years. I still believed. The belief never took, went away, but the anger, the unknowns, how could God, you know, you, when, when, when things go bad for us, there's always something ready to blame. And as a Christian, it's sometimes very easy to sit there and maybe blame God. Why me? Why us? Why not somebody else down the road? And that sounds bad to say, D, but if we, if we were honest with each other, I think uh, we've all probably said that. You've seen a lot of situations, you know, and I looked through all the course of everything that happened there with Cole going, Serena being so sick at that time. That's just even, D, we could talk for days and days and days about what happened 20 years ago between Serena being sick and Cole passing away. And that five years, that five years was probably the most brutal time of my lifetime. Uh, and then when Cole passed, D, we can continue to move forward there. What a perfect recipe starting to set up and starting to brew for a divorce. Let's call it what it is. Serena and I start blaming each other. We both separated from the church. It's not that we didn't love the church. It's not that we didn't love God, but we were upset with God. But D, so many times when... When people would come and say, we're going to pray for you, we're going to pray for you. And, and don't get me wrong, D, they were thousands and thousands and thousands of prayers. But when the prayers weren't working, you get to a point, you put that wall up, you just, you don't want to hear it anymore. I'll take care of this myself, God. Thanks for being here, but I'll take care of this myself. As a man, boy, what a fool I was, D. <laughs> so through the course of years, started to try to understand Indeed, I think as we all we will all agree that as a Christian, there's sometimes that we don't understand why things are thrown upon us. We don't understand why, where, when, how. We just know it happens. And what a key word there is your faith gets challenged. How strong are you with with your faith? And uh at that time we had broken away from our, our church that I had been with for virtually most of my life lifetime d and uh i was fishing a tournament there in seminole lake seminole there on the florida georgia line and i'd hooked up with a, a man there out of tennessee there old darren fantastic man he and i just became very instantly close friends kind of like you and i d just one of them relationships that it didn't take any effort to build Next thing I know, D and I talked, and he and I became traveling partners. And so it was always comforting to know that when we were both on the road and away from our wives and our family, that, that at least he and I had each other to set their room with and this and that. And long story short there, D, we were practicing. I had the last day of practice there before the tournament started there on Seminole. And uh, I was actually fishing in the left seat out in, in Darren's boat. 
we were coming down the river, getting ready to head back in. And we were towards that last day of practice as a tournament fishing D we run into in, in a, in a hurried situation because you only got so much time you can spend on the water. So we're heading up there, heading, heading back towards the ramp. And we have about 20, 25 miles of river run to run. And up there, probably a couple of miles ahead of us, there was a huge trussle made out of, made out of steel there. Huge, huge railroad trussle. These bass boats now, they, they run, you know, 68 to 80, 80, 90 miles an hour. They're quick. They're, they're rocket ships. D's been in this business as long as I have. Uh, There's no ifs, ands, buts that you had two, two gentlemen in there that absolutely knew how to operate a high-powered bass boat. Well, we're heading towards this trussle, D, and I see a small John boat heading towards us. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't question D because once again, he's a professional. He, he, he understands how to operate a boat. And as we started getting close to this trussle there, I'm thinking to myself as, as being in the left seat, they're thinking, what, what's the best thing to do here? And D did exactly what I would have done, D or uh, Darren, or Daryl, I'm sorry. And uh, from somewhere out of where, out of anything that happened, when that boat sat down, D, that boat hooked on us about 75, 78 mile an hour. It hooked. D's a big old boy. He, uh, old Darren, he, he's about 300 some pounds. And when that boat sat there and hooked, it started spinning down that river. And we became closer and closer and closer to these trussels, which were made out of steel. And when that boat finally got done spinning, I was I kicked off to the outside of the boat, hanging over. D was on top of me, getting get we both get thrown over. Well, Daryl, my, my head was about two or three inches away from that steel girder. It's like, wow, we got lucky. We should, in all honesty, we should have both been dead. Fish that tournament, come home. And uh, I looked in the mirror. I said, you know, when I was a very young man, about 13 or 14 years old, I asked Christ into my life. I said, but boy, I sure enough not been living a life for Christ. You know, I took it for granted that I asked for salvation. I asked Jesus into my heart. I wasn't living right, D. I looked in that mirror when I got home, and I shook up after that a little bit. I looked in that mirror there when I got back here to Melbourne, Florida, there at the house. And I said, if I had died, I truthfully had to ask myself, would I be going to heaven to see my son? Would I be going to heaven to see Jesus? And D, I be honest with you, I always thought my bags were packed correctly. But that minute when the rubber hit the road and you have to look in that mirror and ask yourself, and if you're honest with yourself, and I couldn't answer myself, I said, something's got to change through the course of a lot of things and uh, a lot of love, a lot of friends, man sitting right here next to me that nobody could see right this second, but the man that helped me set this, helped set this computer stuff up, Brother Stephen West, he's, uh, <laughs> he opened the doors for me at Graceway to meet Pastor Steve Barry and, uh, Lo and behold, Steve Barry loved to fish, and we hit, hit it off pretty quickly. And it didn't take me long to have some serious conversations with Brother Barry there, or, or Pastor Barry, and uh, I had to rededicate my life to Christ, Daryl, and uh, puts tears in my eyes because I still sit here today thinking I'm not deserving of it. Uh, how good he has been to me and my family and open the doors here to Graceway for us to not only just attend, but to become members. And I've always, my favorite character in the Bible has always been Paul. And I said, wow, he can use any one of us at any time, at any given point, D. He can use us. And who would have ever thought that the loss of a son would allow me to use that story and testimony to build friendships across this country, to sit here and do what we're doing today, D, to become a deacon, 
and I don't say that in a prideful manner, D, but who in the world would have ever thought that this man right here, Mike Wisniewski, would be sitting here talking to Pastor Daryl Grimes and be able to call myself an ordained deacon? God can use each and every one of us, brother. And I think we all realize this, but until you might get hit flat, just get knocked out, you don't understand why God might put us through some situations because I'm going to be honest with you, D, and I, I, I admitted this to you on the boat when you and I fished. Uh, if Cole would have stayed healthy and everything would have been status quo, everything's good for Brother Mike here, everything's good for Serena, everything's good for the Wisniewski family, yeah, I'd have had that relationship with God. Way to come to church here and there, and but not the way we should be doing it. I'd have still lived Mike's life. You see what I'm saying, D? And I don't think that's what God had intended for me. And so sometimes, D, that the, the answers that, that, that we're looking for might not be the answers that we need, but it's the answers God knows we need. It's his plan. And I just look back at it, D, and I, I thank God each and every day for, for keeping Serena and I together for taking care of Cole. Our son's 23 years old, Lane. He's flying, getting ready to join the airlines, be a pilot for the airlines. And, uh, oh, D, what just, it, it's been a whirlwind of a life there, brother. So, like I said, we could talk about it for, for hours on hours of days, if not days, D, but uh, at the end of the day, D, that God can use each and every one of us at any given second of the day. And the best quote that I had was an old man back here when I was during all that course time. As you know, I was, I was on the space shuttle program. An elderly man come up to me and he knew I was struggling with a lot of things in my head. He said, Mike, he says, never put a question mark at the end of God's period. At that time, the first thing I said was, well, that's pretty profound. I don't need this mess. I don't want to hear this. But as time had went on, D, those words had echoed and, 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 and embedded in this old bald head of mine that that's exactly what I was doing, D. I was questioning God and asking him why. Because, see, I was selfish, just like any parent would be. Instead of asking God, I should have been saying, thank you, God, because he's see, he seen so many different things that we can't imagine. Maybe I want the man to sit there and be able to father a sick child for many years. I, I, I don't know. D, we can play the game all day long. At the end of the day, God's plan was the right plan. And the good Lord is just beyond D. He's blessed us. He's blessed every one of us, D. So... Kind of in a nutshell, D, that's the story right there, buddy. You know, I've done a lot of these interviews now, and it's always amazed me that the interviews that I've done with people that have gone through tragedy, that are hurting, um, that have gone through things sim similar to what you've talked about, are always the most watched interviews. And I think personally, my opinion is that one reason why that's true is because everybody hurts. In one form, shape, form, or fashion, Job said that we're a few days in full trouble. And so for the person that's watching this later, who's hurting, who's gone through a tragedy, who has pain, who doesn't understand why. Looking back, you're kind of on the other side of this now, 19, 20 years removed. Although, as you said, it's still fresh in some ways. What can you say to that person? What, what can, and you know, you know words are cheap, right? Yes, sir, absolutely. You've been there. But 
from your own experience and from what God has, has shown you through this? Because one of the questions I often ask is, what did you learn about God and what did you learn about yourself when you went through this tragedy? Um, and I've gotten some amazing answers to those questions, but what, um, what, what, what would you say to that person that's hurting right now? It's okay to grieve. God's so powerful. God is so loving that it's okay for a while to be mad at God. See, God can handle that. God wants to hear exactly the way we feel in my belief, D. God doesn't want us to sit there and think everything in our lives every second, thing, which he already knows. But he doesn't want us to sit there and try to give false pretense of saying everything's grand and glory today. I think God wants us to understand or, or allow us to sit there and have that opportunity. To me, that's that relationship, that special relationship that he has allowed us to have by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. He's allowed us that, that, that grand opportunity, D. This is not like you and I, and I love you more than you know. I mean, me and you are good friends, D. But we're talking about a relationship with the king of kings, the great I am. And to sit there and be able to be disappointed, upset, aggravated, mad. I think he allows us to go through that to vent. I've always looked at it, D, as this here. God's hand never left me through those days and those times. He never left it. That hand was right there upon me, D. I'm the one, I'm the one that pulled away. But God is so patient with us that he was always there. And even though I was upset and aggravated, hurt, confused, I never made any of those steps. For all those years, D, I never made any of them steps by myself. He carried me through them. And so when somebody might go through a difficult time, a difficult situation, a tragedy, things that are just unexplainable, that even though it would be very easy for me to say, just brother, just keep having faith. Keep having faith. Go to your local church and listen to Daryl Grimes. Go to your local church and hear Pastor John Johnson. Sometimes, unless you've been in somebody's shoes there, it's hard to understand. Have faith. Keep your belief. But just know that God's not left you. He's not left you, and he loves us more than we will ever know, D. And sometimes, through the course of, it could be in a couple of days, D. It could be years. It might be a point we don't ever know or ever see. But God's going to use that situation. He's going to use that situation. And he's going to allow to use that situation, D, to sit there and do what we're doing today, to be able to speak to somebody, to do uh, to men speaking engagements like, like, like we've talked about and that we, I've been blessed to do. Uh, I know this kind of adds on to the question that you asked, Steve, but even though we lost one son, we gained such a, we still have such a love for, for Lane and both, both boys. But here, here's the strangest thing, D, how God already had all this planned out. And I'm going to embarrass this young man sitting next to me, Brother Stephen West. But see, this old goofy fellow here, young fellow there from North Carolina, when I just sat there and was confused and looking for something, D, I was looking for a church of some reason, some way, somehow, I don't know, D, I, I have no idea, I can't explain it. It was God's will for me to sit there and knock on the door here at Graceway Church. I knocked on the door, nobody answered. I was like, well, here we go. I'm trying to come back, but I don't know what to do, and now nobody's even here. And all of a sudden, uh, I'm driving down the street, and a young man comes running down and chases my truck down. I roll down the passenger window, and I hear this North Carolina draw from this tall, linky young fella. <laughs> he said, "Hey, man, I'm sorry." He said, "I," he said, "I," 
He has back there in the back room, Barry, and he said, I, I thought I heard somebody seen you drive away. So was that you knocking? I said, yeah. Didn't have no idea who this, this young fella was. His brother, Stephen West. <laughs> who would have, <laughs> I could cry, I could laugh. I, I, it's, who would have ever thought this young man here, Stephen West there, not only became probably one of my very closest friends, Pastor D, but I'll be honest with you, I'm old enough to be his daddy, and I almost sit there and look at him like, like he's one of my sons. And then his wife, Elizabeth. We built that relationship up pretty quick. But here's the craziest thing about it. Here's, here's where the blessings become unbelievable. That even though we lost Cole at two and a half years old, God has blessed Serena and I. It's not blood. It's not family of blood. But with two young child, children right now from Stephen and Elizabeth, and those two, those two youngins are Carson and Ava. And they've allowed us to, allowed us to be a part of that family. And so God's allowed us to sit there And enjoy the time that we lost with Cole through two very special babies. So if anybody's hearing that, and when they struggle, ain't no telling how much many blessings are ahead of them and some goods are going to come out of it there from something that we just can't see, comprehend, or, or understand. And we treat them two babies like they're our practice grandbabies. We keep saying, well, if Lane ever gets married and if he ever has children, we'll be ready. But we are enjoying absolutely probably the best time of our life right now because of Stephen and Elizabeth and those two babies right now. And it ain't because of us. That's because God had all this planned out way before I ever got to know these people, D. So that's what I'd have to say is get up in the morning, Grieve, continue to have faith, but be honest with God and just keep pushing on each and every day, deep. Amen. And we should be honest with God because he already knows how we feel. Anyway. Yes, sir. There's no hiding it, is there, D? <laughs> you know, I, I preached a message one time about, about all the times in scripture that people question God. And even Jesus on the cross said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And I understand there's a difference between questioning God in the sense that we don't think we, we know what he's doing versus questioning God with an honest heart. God, I don't understand. I'm grieving. I really would love some answers. I think there's two different ways, you know, and uh, even Jesus said, why, why have you forsaken me? So I, th I think that's a great piece of advice um, to, to, as you said, to be honest with God and, and, and be willing, you know, when he does give us the answers, it may not be always the answers that we want, but he gives us the answers that we need.